Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays and with this, this is my uh, weekly Minecraft update video for you and yes we're still playing the Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack which means we've got lots and lots of different mods to play around with lots and lots of different technologies many many things and a massive book of quests to help us get along with them and, and work out what to do. So here is our um, our our base area it's changed a little bit since last time but not an enormous not an enormous amount visibly from up here like we've we've organized the cows a bit better over there a uh, yeah, we've put in a some foundations for a sort of a barracks building over there and I think the um, smeltery building over there has got a little bit bigger the farm may have got slightly bigger as well I wouldn't like to wouldn't like to say for sure but let's get on with the sort of the things I've been doing first because obviously that's the most exciting or at least it is for me so in the last in in the last uh, run, I'd, I'd built up this area over here, which I've described as a blood room at the time. Um, it's now turned into a full-on wizard's dungeon, which I'm quite pleased with. So in here, we've got a deposit area for um, well for blood, not to put too fine a point on it. So the idea is that any I've al I've also made sure everyone's got so everyone's got one of these sentient swords, and when these are used on a mob, they uh, they they, make, they cause the mob to drop their soul or their will, I suppose, when they when they die. And when you pick those up, that gets put into the Tartaric gem, and that allows you to store quite a lot of it. I think it's 64 per gem, instead of having to carry lots and lots and lots of the individual ones. And the sword is a big step up over the snare that I was using before as well. Coupled with that, we've got the blood extractor, and that allows the and, and that means that whenever you kill something, you also get the blood from that creature. And it turns out even skeletons have blood. And then when you when you've got some in it, you can come over to the uh, the deposit system here, right click on it. As you can see, it's gone sploosh into the bottom of there. We can just dump it in there until it's empty. Now dumping it in there, if I wasn't in creative mode, that would only go in once. But I'm I am in creative mode for the purpose of the demonstration. But this is then designed to to come all the way down here like this, so so the um, the blood can then be accessed from down here in, in the in the dungeons of the wizard's cave. And down here, I've been doing quite a little bit of quite a lot of organising. Over on this side, we've got the drawers that hold all the different magical flowers for um, it's mystical agriculture, I think. So all the mystical flowers, we've got, we've got blue, lime, yellow, grey, orange, light blue, white, and so, and so on and so on. So all the different kinds of flowers I've been making. And we've got this uh, apothecary, which we use for, make, for, for growing flowers in, uh, or, or modifying flowers in. So some sort of genetic modification system. So I can throw in... The petals of various different flowers and then throw in um, and then throw in some seeds and make sure there's water in there and it'll turn into into a flower like this pure daisy that i've made and that allows you to mess around with various things also down here i've moved the hellfire forge in here because that's again another uh, black magic thing got some storage space and I've, I've got another crafting station now with some tools in it for appropriate stuff for what i'm doing down here with the magics and i've got a blood infuser and this allows you to sort of to put blood into various different types of things so i've got an iron a block of iron in there at the moment that i need to fill up with blood so i've put some more blood in from the blood extractor let's see is that enough no i need to put in quite a bit more there we go now it can now it can bubble away happily which is lovely <laughs> It sits, so it sits there bubbling for a little while as it sort of infuses this block of iron or whatever you put in there with blood. And that means once it's done, once it's done that, you can then use it for various dark magic purposes. Um, I'm not sure what these dark magic purposes are just yet, but I'm sure I'll find out in the next stream. Um, so I've also got some water down here for the, uh, for the plant magic stuff. So the plant magic has a number of uses. One of the things is that any of the, um, any of the special plants, you can get the, uh, you can get the, um, petals from them. Those petals can then be processed in a crafting station with a pestle and mortar to turn them into dyes which you can then use for making various different things. I needed some of that for, for making my um, blood infuser for example and there's various other things that require it as well. And we've got these pure daisy things and these you can put down and then surround them with wood or stone and then magic happens and they get turned into a special type of wood or stone um, called the, the living version and that takes a while so I'll just show you one I made earlier. Um, we get this living wood or living rock which you can use for I'm not really sure yet again it's sort of things that I'm working my way through the quest line along um, <clears throat> through the white magic and that's the, so that had me grow find some flowers get the petals off them make the petal apothecary make some make some dyes from the uh, petals and to make some floral fertilizer which you can use to if there's any gaps in your um, in your mystical flowers you can go and chuck one of these at a patch of dirt and bloop about half a dozen random different types of flowers appear so you can probably fairly quickly get the ones you're missing I had to do that for the dark blue ones then you can get a pure daisy out you can make a pure daisy using the apothecary as i was saying earlier 
and that allows you to make these living wood and living rock and I think that then allows you to go on to make wands and things like that so that was that's something we're going to investigate later along with the vine ball and then on the black magic side I've sort of stopped here because I got to the sentient sword and then I decided I need to, then for the next thing I need to make a blood altar and that requires these demon plates and having looked at this I don't think there's any way to make these because you need demon ingots which requires demon metal or all kinds of just basically it requires you to have got some demon metal from somewhere and I'm not 100% sure on how to get that yet so I'm sort of waiting to see I mean it says suggests here that maybe you can go and um possibly throw gold into lava possibly you have to i don't know so i'm just going to leave that alone for now and see if some, see if another sub quest somewhere along the lines tells me how to make that there are lots of other ways to make it as well but again they're all sort of they all require demonic shards or um again the demonic ingots in various different ways so there's there's lots of ways to make them but none of them are actually remotely useful so i won't be doing that for a little while so I've been working along the blood magic uh, quest line along the top here. So I did the hardened blood. I got the dark, the dark power gem involved throwing a dark gem into into a into an area that had lots and lots of blood in it, um, or it could be done with a blood infuser. So I've made a couple of those, and that allowed me to go then go on and make these blood infusion cores, and then onto the to make the actual blood infuser itself. So there's a bit of a circular dependency there, but you're able to short circuit to make your first couple of gems by just filling up a big hole in the ground with blood and throwing a gem into it and it'll absorb all the blood for you so that was lovely then made a bowl of empty promises i still don't know what this is for but i'm just following along with the quest line to just, just to see where it goes and made some mossy cobblestone some bloody cobblestone dead bushes all those sort of fancy fancy things so that pretty much covers what i've been up to Mike has been starting to make or at least starting to plot paths between some of the buildings so eventually this this sort of torn up brown area will presumably lead over to all of the other buildings over here um, and up here as well apparently I don't know what building is going to go in up here but apparently something is at least that's why probably why there's a line going that way um, he spent a lot of time doing some sorting he did some he did some spelunking oh and he went out and um, will gathering and blood gathering for me which is very kind of him because I did need I needed quite a lot of that but that allowed me to make everybody the magic swords and the blood extractors which means they could then both go out and get the resources that I need but as a sort of as a return for that favor it allowed them to have a sword that would get better and better the more stuff they kill so you know it's a sort of it, it, it's it's an advantage for them and an advantage for me as well Tristan has been building this wall down here uh, with the uh, with the map on it so you can you can take a look at that if you if you if you, if you feel so inclined and see what the um, the area around us looks like if for some reason you don't want to look at this map i mean it it, it it's the same map so it's um, it's a possibly of limited use, but it looks quite pretty. We've also got a requesting area now, which is over here, and this allows us. The idea behind this is we can each we can all have chests here, and we can put a wish list on the on the notice no, uh, notepads up here. And then if we're really lucky, people will come along and chuck the stuff we need in the um, in in the chests for us, or at the very least, it acts as a sort of a um, a way of helping us remember what we need and somewhere where we can start gathering things uh, like like this. So these are currently oh we've got a diamond and some iron in here so that's that's, that's getting on gradually for the uh, for the draw controller. So there's some progress has been made there. Well done there. Um, he's also been running out mining because we've been getting through a lot of resources with all of the uh, all of the building and stuff we've been doing. And a bit of sort of resource gathering, and resource gathering including sort of going out finding metals, but also going out and finding blood and will for my um, for for, uh, for 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 my dark magic shenanigans. Peter's been continuing to be the um, the uh, farmer of the uh, the group, and so he's done a couple of couple of things he's focused on. So he's been harvesting all of these crops when they grow up to to maturity levels, um, and also as part of the farming, he's been doing a bit of animal husbandry over here. Um, so he's been feeding the cow. We all got some cow eggs for some reason. Apparently that's how you get cows in this game. You you, you hatch a cow egg and suddenly bloop you get a cow. So we're we're sort of waiting for uh, for all of these cows to grow up a little bit, and then we can start milking them and getting all getting resources like that for, for further food, food f foodery from them. And so Pete also put put the um, the hay bales in the middle of the um, is this a gate? Yes it is. Hay bales in the um, in the paddock with them. And the idea of this was, so rather than coming over and hand feeding them um, oats whenever they got hungry, he could just leave the hay in the middle and they could they could feed off them. Now this was all this all worked fairly well, except there was a bit of an issue that if you have these if you have the hay bales too close to the edge of the um, 
edge, edge of the, the paddock to the fence. Then the cows climb on them like this, and then they just jump over the walls, uh, jump over the fences and escape. So about three or four times we had to let Pete know that his cows had got out into the rest of the um, into the rest of the base, and we're just wandering around here gnawing on the farm. So. Um, that led to a few panics, but uh, I th but he managed to attempt them back in with presumably with the oats again. He's also been getting on with all of the uh, kitchen shenanigans over here and um, and producing lots and lots of new recipes. So we've got in here now we've got various things like we have grog, so we can start drinking things if we're drinking if we want. Um, we've got melon juice, uh, vegetarian lettuce wraps apparently delightful apple smoothies lemon lots and lots of different things coming up and he's gradually working through so our kitchen over here now has all kinds of novel things like a juicer and a copper pan and a knives and pots and mortars and all kinds of other useful stuff for making delicious food he's also been making some psychotropic jams and if you take these out if you eat these weird things happen right so if i eat this jam then I've now got some sort of I've, I've got I get various buffs from it. It looks like one of them is a speed thing. So we go. I've got a regeneration. I've got speed, and I've got well fed. So the jam, just eating that one jar of jam, has given me all of that excitement. Basically, it's a, as far as I can tell, it seems to be basically a sugar high. Some of the other ones will would do slightly less good things. Like there's one of them that gives you regeneration, I think, but also gives you um, also, also gives you uh, blindness for five seconds. So if you're out if you're out at, um, it, doing some sort of expedition-y shenaniganery, then it could be quite useful because if you manage to find a, a safe spot and you, but you're short on health, you could eat the jam, you'll quickly regenerate your health, but you'll be blind for five seconds. But if you're somewhere safe, that's not so much of a problem. There was also some death-related shenanigans going on with um, Al tempting Pete out with the promise of cheap bone meal um, and then finding out that that, oh, that just, mean, just means he's found a load of skeletons. So I think uh, Pete got killed, killed a few times. But with the slime slings, it's reasonably easy to... Uh, I'm going to put the boots on first. With the slime slings, it's quite easy to just cover enormous distances quite quickly. So even if you do die on the, a million miles away, it doesn't take too long to get back out there again until you hit the water and that ends up stopping you <laughs> but it's a, it's a nice theory and it is it is quite effective for getting around and we've got a couple of boats as well for when you for when you inevitably run out of slime slings because you've died repeatedly al has been working on the uh, once again working on buildings so we up here we've got the um the uh, start, start, start as, I, as I was saying earlier, we've got the foundations of what's going to be some barracks. And I don't know what the rest of the building is going to be used for, because it seems quite big when there's only five of us on the server. But maybe we're going to get some quite large, luxurious rooms, so we don't get the, uh, the sort of the RimWorld style uh, debuffs from, um, from from being trapped, from having an unimpressive bedroom and that sort of thing. Um, well, we also went off and found a another yet another temple to investigate. And of course, when I say investigate, I basically mean loot. I'm sure it was out somewhere in this snowy area. Maybe we've looted it so effectively there's, abs there's absolutely nothing left of it. Um, that's possible. We, we did want quite a lot of marble for various building projects. And there's something has happened around here. That might, might that look, does look like a creeper explosion. Oh no, there it is over there. So yes, we found this um, this here temple. And we came over and made a bit, made a bit of a mess of it with our, with our pickaxes. Dug up quite a lot of the marble. Investigated it for sort of useful stuff. Came down here and um, lit, it, lit it up. And as I say, looted quite a lot of the marble. So whoever made this temple is probably going to be quite upset with us. But never mind, we've got a load of their stuff now. And we've, we're, we're probably going to use it to make our, our, our base area a bit prettier. And I think this marble is going to be quite useful because I've requested a wizard's tower. Because I feel that having a little sort of hole in the ground isn't quite, what we, isn't quite the feel we're going for. So I've asked Al to produce a tower that is... Um, essentially, I want I want a sort of a nice um, dark, spooky-looking castle bit around the bottom of it that goes down into a into a subterranean dungeon, and then a and a slender, pretty, fancy light wizard's tower, probably made out of marble, coming out above it that will uh, look that will be be suitable for all of this the flower-based shenanigans, probably with a garden up in the top of it. So we'll see what that looks like once it's once it's designed, once it's sort of sketched out, once it's built. But for now, it's going, to, it's going to take a little while to get that up in, in, in place. And we also need to decide where to put it as well. Uh, and how to make it easy to get, get, get to and get away from as well. But then the slime slings help a lot with that. Maybe, maybe up on, on the top of here, that's quite a nice area. But we shall see. I think that covers pretty much everything we've been doing. A lot of it has been just covering the... Um, the 
quests that we have that we've been working on previously so uh, qu the general quest lines we've been working on previously so making a bit bit of progress a f further along those and I th and possibly in the next in the next session we're going to be following more of the same sort of things but we also have unlocked the tier one quest lines we've got the engineers workshop and sandy glass and flowers and uh, and so on all going on down here there's a lot of quests left left for me to, to sort of try and finish up when I uh, when I remember to and uh, and, gen and uh, generally carry on with things as, as they're going so there's lots lots to do lots to see lots to build uh, do come along and join us we'll be streaming again on next monday at uh, half seven uk time so uh, there'll be plenty plenty to see there and plenty of um, plenty of shenanigans and goodness knows what going on the other thing the, oh yeah the other thing i did make was the um i don't know where it's gone i, I, ma I made a um a copper a, a, a copper no a, a coal generator but it seems to have been taken by somebody else maybe they found something useful to use to use it for so uh, well done them um but that was what that that got us onto the sec second tier or the tier tier one of the um of the, of the quest line so yes as i say more more streaming next monday there'll be a factorio stream on wednesday of course because there all there always is that's when that's when they've been moved to now and other videos here and there around the week as as as, as and when things 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 work out these streams are all on Twitch these days, so please go over and watch them on there. Um, I'm, I'm going to have, probably have to stop doing them on YouTube because I had some technical difficulties last time and I think I'm not supposed to be anyway. So come over there to join me and I'll see you there. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.